What is up, YouTube, and welcome back to another Rift Guys Wild Rift video. It's your favorite inter rank one cooks right at it with another Chinese gameplay. You see these crazy moves? That is Sovereign Rank One Akali on the Chinese server. You're about to see the most crazy stuff you've seen in a long time, and I have two gameplays for you, so bear with me because we're hopping straight into the action with the special Supreme Cells Akali skin. If you have no idea what that is, well, you've been scum by the global server because we don't have this cool stuff anyway. Maybe we'll get it next year, but yeah. No hopes yet, but today is the time for some Akali gameplay. Anyways, let's move into the game. Okay, we have Akali into A6. So if the, oh, rank 69, well, any comments into the chat? Come on, I know you want it, let it out, come on, let me know. Throw it into the comment section, I really know you want to. Anyway, Akali into Mr. Zix. So what will happen? You see in the bottom left, we have some nice runes set up. We have the full resolve first tree making a belly impossible for the enemy to do anything during to, to you during the laning phase. Zix is a range champion. He would bully us a little bit in the early game, but there are a few things we can do. We can start with our third ability. And if we get a prime shot onto the Zix, he'll basically just evaporate. Other than this, we just chill in lane and wait for him to push, and we just carefully lost it. We just don't really do anything. Oh, he missed the first ability onto minion, has to walk up now, misses the minion gold, unfortunately. And yeah, for the items, since we'll have a lot of time now, unless we just want to talk about the laning phase, which I can, so uh, let's start with this. Zix is supposed to poke you, right? And that is his entire design. Once you're level 5 on Akali, you can just kill him on the go because you just have to press Alt, hit all your spells, which is going to be easy because all you have to do is autocast and he'll just be a goner. With level 2, he can start establishing heavier traits with the power of a second ability because it will help him reset the mini nagger with the most deadly thing in the early game. So now the wave is in a very bad spot. Zix can just push it in, however, so everything will be fine again. Now this would be a situation where Zix could... Uh, keep on poking because the Akali second ability is on cooldown, but now the Akali is level three, so now the Zix has to be really, really careful. He has to utilize all his spells constantly to farm from giga high range, forcing um, the Akali, or um, basically the, the Akali is forcing the Zix to spend mana and cooldowns to go for CS, whereas the Akali is just moving back and forth. And every single time the Zix misses a spell, his mana goes closer and closer to being out of mana, and then it's an absolute disaster for him. And second wind will keep him absolutely safe. Nice combo here onto the minion, utilizing the shuriken flip to just get closer to go for info a little trait here, because the Akali wants to either go base anyway, or set up a dive. But the dive cannot realistically be set up without any assistance, and yeah, the, the, the jungle just die. what the hell is just happening? Now, talking about the items in the bottom left, we are running Sudden Impact as well as with the mana. Ooh, hits level 5, hits one nice shuriken flip, and it's just a disaster for the Zix. Let's look at it again, because it was so clean, no? Let's look at this one again. So here... So, hits level 5. Zix goes too close, goes in, hits the combo, hits the shuriken again. Goes in for a quick execute, didn't even have to use the th the second part of the ultimate to go back to go for a kill. He had enough damage anyway. Nicely set up dive here. Corrected, like he just corrected me because I didn't think he would be able to do this, but apparently he was. And he even gets more platings. Akali champion damage is crazy. Zix is now back being level three and yeah, the Akali has nothing to fear. There's no way she can die. And now the Akali will come back with Boots of Mana, and not only Boots of Mana, but also Prophet's Pendant. So now the Zix has a problem. We have 13 pen there, 8 pen there, and another pen from Prophet's Pendant. So with all this in place, your life is now, respectfully, Mr. Zix, over. And it's just such a grotesque thing when this state is established. If you get the pen on Akali, you just continue one-shotting. And even if you buy defensive items against Akali, look at how he's zoning the Zix from the golden XP. You see this so rarely and I'm so happy to see it in this game. Like every single time the Zix tries to go for poke, he might push the wave 
at the same time. And if he doesn't get the last hit, he's too far away to even get the local gold, making it so much more difficult to even obtain any resources. And the Akali is fine with trading all the HP, because there's nothing that can realistically happen to her unless the enemy jungle just comes around the corner. And the moment he has level six, uh, 5 uh, uh, ult again, he just goes up and kills the Zix if he gets too close. Like, if the Zix gets too close to the Akali, he instantly dies. Like, I really hope we'll see him just hop in with an ultimate very soon. Like, the moment Zix used his second ability, I think, yeah. Like, now there's a big window. Oh, look at the Akali holding the wave in the mid lane, setting up a, a nice freeze again, forcing the Zix to push with abilities. And since he's so far away and his cooldowns are too high, he cannot realistically gain all of these last hits, making him lose more gold, more XP over time. Oh, Zix, you really do not want to face this Akali in the river. That one is a thing you do not want to do. Who gets into the local XP range again. Look at the big laning differential. This is one of the biggest XP leads you've ever seen in mid lane. Because in Wild it's very difficult to have big leads for XP. Because you gain so much catch-up XP, etc. is absolutely crazy. Now we're getting closer to a state where Akali needs to be a little bit more mindful. Because if she's negligent uh, for a moment here, she might actually die. Goes for a quick little hit here. This will solidify. Oh, Leona is here, but there's no risk yet. There just has to press... W at some point or ult like there's just no risk you can just walk it off if the Leona however hits a stun here the Zix combo might just instantly bow up and she's getting dangerously closer and closer and closer to the low HP value the jungle is currently on the wrong side of the map lost dragon and now is late to the rotation and the Akali is not really at a, in a spot to do something about this she doesn't really have the HP so even, like, there's nothing she can do. So she is, like, remember the video, cut your losses. Like, let me know if you uh, watch the video. Cut your losses. She can't do anything about this. So she doesn't participate instantly. Rather goes for the reset. Because if she went instantly, she would have just died. Now she's there and can potentially change something with all the gold she has spent. Big damage now is left alone with the Kha'Zix. Maybe goes in back again. Instantly taps the Kha'Zix. Is sent home. Look at the damage of this champion. It is an unrealistic kind of damage you're seeing right now. It makes me furious. It makes my blood boil. And we see another reset. And it seems like we are going for a crown of the Shattered Queen in the bottom left. Mm. Getting a lot of extra haste here with the Fiendish Codex, making it easier to have more ultimate abilities. Because in, in all reality, uh, Akali doesn't really need her ultimate to kill someone. At this point, if she hits anyone but Leona with a third ability, she kills. Uh, nicely played by the Zix, will lose the Akali with one minion. Um, but yeah, if the Akali has ultimate more often, she'll obviously be able to go for more plays. And that's something that's very important. Because getting a kill on Akali is very easy. But carrying a game as an Akali is not that easy. Um, they made it very clear that it's very, very simple to get someone killed. But once you do this, oh, nice combo by the Malphite, instantly using the second ability, nice reaction time, goes in for another play, instantly kills the Malphite, just had enough. You see the reaction time on that player? Oh, well, the BM recall for a brief moment could have been too much. But yeah, you just saw the instant reaction of the, of the smoke bomb. That was crazy. Now even picks up this, uh, the fruit here, picks up some platings, oh. Got one, if I'm not mistaken, before the tower platings fell off. Yeah, it's just, you just love to see it. That's just some crazy gameplay. Crown is like 180 gold away. It would have been beautiful. Oh, the Kha'Zix was in the bottom side of the jungle, top side of the jungle. Unironically, granting the Akali some extra gold here. And the Akali just wants to stay on the map until he has the item completion. Needs to be careful of the Malphite. Maybe the Malphite has ult again. Ooh, ignites. Oh, this 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 is going to be a tell. This is a tell usually that the method has ultimate suit. Wait, did all method miss? No way. That was some ballsy move. 150 gold to invest your ultimate feels kind of bad to be honest. But I guess he needed the gold anyway. Still feels kind of bad.
And one of the biggest issues, I think, for Akali, why it's so much more difficult to carry with her, you can't really go side lane, can you? Because, number one, your wave clear is not really that good. And um, you rather want to be in a teamfight scenario. Your damage will be high enough, don't get me wrong, to deal with most of the side laners unless they itemize specifically against you. But still. Um, it makes it very, very difficult, because if the enemy team has Hallbreaker, etc., ooh, they spot the Kha'Zix, it doesn't have ultimate available here. Hits him with a nice little uh, fade away first ability. But yeah, without ultimate, there's just no way she can catch up to the Kha'Zix unless she hits her third ability. This can look so nice, though. And now, like, there's not much she can do on the, like, they're basically playing ARAM in bot lane right now. So, why should she be there if there's nothing to accomplish? Because look, they're just looking at each other, they're not, dealing, they're not even dealing damage to the tower. So there's no point of going. So, what she does, she does exactly what I said, is normally not that powerful for her, like, clearing sideways. But she would only lose gold by sticking with the team in a play where nothing can be done. Because look, they're still just looking at you, they're not, not really accomplishing anything. And now with the dragon being spawned, or having spawned, there's now a neutral objective that is a point of conflict, where they can force a fight. Ooh, she didn't want to ult that guy, but she just instantly pops that guy, pops the second ability, plays for time, waits for a brief moment to just deal more damage. Many Akali players would have just instantly just ulted again. She was very patient. Now the Kha'Zix is coming in for a play, flash out the ultimate ability. The Kha'Zix jumps over the wall, avoids certain death here. Ooh, picks the truth, jumps him again to the Kha'Zix, instantly nearly kills the Kha'Zix, but certainly will fall to this. Has smoke pump again. She actually survives. But did you see the damage to the Kha'Zix? That's what I mean when, when I say Akali doesn't really need ultimate to kill somebody. Because, yeah, this champion's damage is crazy. Oh, Dr. Moonbro. Moonbro, no! Well, don't do steroids. Mr. Moonbro just suffered severely from this kind of abuse. And, yeah, like, think about this, okay? Akali, at this point, didn't really have full damage itemization. She had a crown. And a crown is not full damage. Crown is a utility defensive item. So she could have even had more damage in that exchange. Goes in for the combo to the Malphite. Look at the damage. It just goes clean out. It's just an instant execution. My god, making the name of the ability a true honor. That is crazy. And her team is again um, going for weird plays, and she is kind of forced to go side because there are these are all like low percentage plays happening on the other side of the map, and there's no point to participate because if you participate in these kind of plays that are already doomed from the start, you are choosing to be an active part towards losing. Yes, you can make the argument, but my team would be flaming me. And you, you can let me know in the comments below how many times this happens, how many times your team is flaming you and they're just running it down inside like somewhere else. Realistically, what could you have changed if you were there? Nothing? Something? And if it's something, would it, been, would it be enough to actually change the outcome of the play? And if not, why are you even being there? Because you participating in that play then will not net you any gold, and without any gold, you will not be able to carry and what he is doing, what he was doing, was just getting more and more gold. And now he's finding an opportunity. He goes for a quick little combo here, kills the Kha'Zix instantly. He has another charge of his ultimate ability available. The EMF walks too close, instantly gets taken care of. What did that guy go for? And now the Malphite even as well gets hit with a third ability. He goes in for a combo. The Malphite gets him closer to the Zix. There's just no way. The Penta's getting stolen. You stole the Penta, you absolute pig. Nah. Master Yi, you are indeed a piglet. That is a criminal offense, and if it's a Kali press surrender vote, I would have accepted that one. That is not okay. Early Baron, as per usual, you know, quick little takeaway. And his Akali is getting stronger and stronger by the minute. 
Another pen item being picked up, and don't forget, right, every single of the completed items also has percentage magic pen, so she has flat, item, flat pen, percentage pen, and most of the carries, I keep on repeating this over and over again, have between 30 and 40 magic resist, like an 80 carry, for example. And if you put those resistances on zero, and the Kali deals 1000 magic damage, you will take 1000 magic damage, and that is nothing you want to take from an Akali. Oh, quick little combo to the Akali. Nice stasis, you're avoiding certain death. This will be a very rough situation. The Akali has to bail here. It's a third ability, but it doesn't connect before the enemy dies. And now the Akali has to basically reset the entire fight. But with the entire team being completely occupied in the top half of the map, she can now take the mid lane wave. And after the mid lane wave, she can make a call of either going for bot lane or reset. Because look, there's just so much gold being taken away because there's no point of recalling at that point earlier up there because you saw all the people on the map and she's doing everything i just predicted her to do goes away from the top lane play Ooh, there's a kha'zix hits the spell as well it's what hm? kha'zix hello hmm well i think i think akali might have a tiny bit of damage just a tiny bit. And she's just the the pinnacle of champion design um, that in Wild Rift, because it's not easy to carry with her, gets buffed over and over again, similar to a lot of other champions. That was just crazy damage. Just, it's absurd. And it's only gonna get worse. And if you think about her getting Awakened Soul Stealer, right? If she executes somebody and gets her cooldowns back again because of how the item works and how much haste you gain from all your items, like Crown is a lot of haste, um, then Awakened Soul Stealer is a decent amount of haste, and then you get a kill and then you get a 25% refund. That is indeed going to turn the tides. Because your shroud cooldown will be substantially lower, your third ability cooldown will be so much lower, your old cooldown, like everything will be so much easier, especially if you have blue buff. Nice combo here into the back line, instantly case it takes care of the misfortune. Looks for another player, but has to be very careful. The Malfa just misses the ult onto her, goes into another target, probably auto casting onto the Mundo. Just wanted to make sure to hit the Akali. Now Akali breaks away from the fight again and takes care of another wave in mid lane. Now they can escort this wave into the mid lane, and if this play ends a little bit early, they can take away potentially the top lane wave, unless they want to contest, uh, contest the next Baron. Mepha doesn't have ultimate right now, so he's not really that much of a threat, and the Akali has ultimate again. It is an absolute mayhem out there. It's an absolute giga insane performance. Kali's playing very reserved, very carefully around the champion's design and her power spikes. Ooh, Kha'Zix, you came into the wrong neighborhood. Ooh, the older cast and Ignite went to the Zig, so the Kha'Zix survives this combo. I oh, remember the older Kali where you can just ult into thin air and also stun people. Yeah, that one was very fun. Imagine, can you imagine that Akali used to be a lot more broken? Like, very distant past, you could actually use your first ability three times on level one. Three times. You can auto attack, step backwards for your passive, and then run after them again to get the reset and get so much more energy, and then use your first ability again, and then do it again. That's three times, which means you could actually kill somebody at level one with your first ability without any counterplay if, if he just walked up. Ooh, he's choosing to opt for a Guardian Angel, because he fears to be one-shot. And given that he's most likely going to get an assist with uh, Awakened Soul Stealer, he'll probably get another set of cooldowns again after reviving, making him not as vulnerable as other champions would be uh, when coming back from Guardian Angel. The Ella will now be the key situation in this game. The game has been pr prolonged for so long because the Akali was the only one really playing so far. And the Mundo is inside of the enemy team achieving nothing, looking really interesting here. Leona misses the spell. 
Akali Crown is still being active. Leona missed the center plate. Ooh, Crown is now being taken away. He needs to be a little bit more careful. He can't really be uh, frontline right now. But something that you can always do with Akali, if you have, um, if you need to stall for time, you can drop your shroud in front of them, and you just you just sit there and wait. Ooh, hits the third ability. It's going to reactivate. It's in Zonis right and reactivates it. Instantly kills. Goes into the backline. Pops the shroud again. The Leona is certainly going to fall here. Now he's looking. He is spotting the enemy flash. Shurikens misses though, and now goes out of the fight. Fight is now over. The Ella will be picked up. Look how patient he is. It's very nice. Now because he is not needed at Elder Dragon, he is pushing out the wave in the top side of the map. He needs to be careful of the misfortune. Because he doesn't have ult, he doesn't have to get closer yet. The Kha'Zix now is walking up to him. Hits the Shuriken. He's not going to walk off. He's not going to take it because the Kha'Zix has jumped into base. That would be a, a certain way of actually losing. You don't want that to happen. My god. This Elder Dragon? Oh no, the, oh no, the Tristana is waiting for somebody to spawn to take the Elder Dragon. I guess. Could have waited for another person. But yeah. Master Yi's icon at the top looks so goofy, if you ask me. But yeah, no, um, Akali's third ability will kill. You know what? I really wish uh, we had these potions in Wild Rift that we have on PC. Like, when you have full build, like, buy any type of potion to give you some extra stats. And by the way, has anyone of you played on Off King so far? And if so, what do you think about the game? Like, I played it, like, I tested it, like, I still struggled a lot with the controls. Didn't properly set them up. And would you just generally be interested in just me playing it and showing it to you? Like, I don't really know, because because the game it seems so weird, but uh, they signed a free years esports contract and the commitment, so it might even be an option. Because so far, I'm still waiting for the right MO to come out. I'm playing some World of Warcraft Season of Discovery on the side. And just working on the company things, but there's no like real game that's like, uh, like really like spamming and making content for right now. Ooh, nice combo here onto the back line, instantly executed. This person will die to the other as well. He's taking so much tower damage, and the Tristana falls to the tower and dies in the clutches of Leona. Oh no, it's a tragedy. The entire team falls and they do nothing with the elder, they just achieve nothing here. The enemy now has maybe a situation where they can pick up. The Baron, if the Malphite gets to tank for the Kha'Zix. Luckily, this doesn't seem to be the case, because this could be the one thing that turns around the game, because the Baron at 21 minutes is basically... I think it's like one point... Uh, I guess you're gone. Um, I guess it amplifies your stats uh, by like 1.5% at this point. Like, generally speaking, not like actually, but effectively, with all the stats it grants you. Damn. What a nice game, and he just finishes the game with the Guardian Angel, and there it ends. And now, we'll just instantly hop over into the next one. Here we see a Zoe matchup into the Akali. Zoe, a really annoying champion to deal with in laning phase, does a lot of damage, is very annoying, has very high kill potential. Seeing the runes on the left hand side with Electrocute, Nullifying up uh, Second Wind, and um, Overgrowth with some impact, so it's the same rune setup. As the screen suggests, subscribe, my friends. And yeah, he's approaching the same type of gameplay the entirety of the time. He just chills here in the right hand side of the jungle, the entrance, to make sure the enemy doesn't get like a free ward. And then he would place down his control ward a little bit later. Now he has the now he has the entry of the lane. Like the Zoe is not allowed to just walk in here. He committed to put a point into his third ability just in case the Zoe walks in. And now the Zoe needs to be a little bit more mindful. She will get the CS, but she lost one. She lost one creep, which actually makes a big difference, because she will not instantly hit level 2 after the next creep. Unless it's a melee creep over time, I think. But yeah, now the zoning happens again, similar to game 1. And she just makes it very, very difficult for the enemy to just catch some air, right? You see how she's utilizing second wind so well. That she's constantly walking up and bullying, trying to bully, trying to posture against the Zoe. Um, but compared to the Zix, this seems like a little bit more difficult. Also, ooh, nice combo here again, seeing the quick little moves here. 
going for good chip damage onto the champion. Um, but the big difference here is that if Zoe sleeps you, she goes for a big chunky trade and you'll lose so much HP compared to, for example, other champions like Zix, who just continuously throwing spells at you. So getting actually close to a Zoe can be kind of a double-edged sword, which could really come back to bite you. Ooh, quick little combo here. There's so much damage. Look at the fast trading here. This is another setup dive. It's like, look, he's continuously doing this every single time. Uh, in the first game and the second game, it seems like like his kind of a move, which you can constantly replicate if you know what you're doing, who gets slapped by the Zoe, avoids the damage portion of the first ability, but gets a sleep procced on the forehead, gets another ultimate ability ready. We see the same play happening, walks out the turret, didn't pop the ignite early because he didn't want to get give the Zoe another ignite as well as getting turret aggro because if he drops the ignite early, he can't just walk back into the tower because the tower will aggro him. But again, it's the same play and he can replicate it in two games in a row. So the question is, why, if you are playing Akali, are you not replicating this to a similar level? We love to see good play. Back in lane, Zoe still one level down, goes in for a quick combo, Zoe misses the sleep and there's big damage coming in. This will be a kill with the flash, yep, instantly taking care of big damage coming in. The Zoe will now lose a lot of extra gold from the minions, if he gets this pushed in fast enough, that is. Uh, probably Zoe probably loses uh, two minions, because the cannon will be alive and now the Gwen is here to soak up the XP and gold. Now the Akali will be able to at least get some gold in the meantime. Oh, she has to get away from this here. Gets the little chickens here. Quick little uh, Grand Theft chicken. And goes back into the lane. The next big power spike here is coming with Prophet's Pendant. So yeah, everything will just get worse for the Zoe. I don't really think Zoe can defend herself anymore. It's not possible. If Zoe gets hit by literally anything, she just dies. Like, if Akali is... Hitting her with a third ability or ultimate ability is just going to be an L angle for little Zoe. Like Zoe has to be really careful how she approaches this and if you just go for these kind of traps over and over again, look how quick he is. Popping the shuriken flip onto a minion, jumping forward, popping the second ability, doing some instant damage. Maybe the um, Zoe would just um, impulsively spam a spell and then auto cast it and since the Akali is invisible it would be auto automatically placed into the minion wave and he would just avoid certain damage. It's just such a nice little trait as well as getting the move bonus movement speed from the second ability as well. It's so well thought through and now we can't really all in here because uh, it's too far. Ah uh, but Zoe makes the mistake here she just walks too close. Walks too close gets instantly like if you are on zoe onto an akali the akali can just r into your face and then she can just walk after you if you don't have your sleep available because what are you supposed to do like if you miss your spells and you're this low on resources she will just kill you and yeah simply because you're under tower doesn't necessarily mean you're safe and this is just a perfect showcase of why this is the case Big money into the bank, the Infinity Orb being completed, two pen items, one fully completed item, and sudden impact. So if the, uh, Zoe uses the sleep again, which means this is a very risky situation, she doesn't take it, it's too much of a risk because the enemy bot lane was around, like the Nami was around, uh, not the Nami, but the Ilulu was around, so this could have been a very risky play. Now the Herald is going to be a very interesting point of conflict. The Ash will certainly fall here, gets another passive reset, looks for another kill here, gets another Vein pickup, needs to be careful, hits the Gwen with the Shuriken Flip, needs to play for time, flashes over the wall to escape certain death, gets ignited as well, the Zoe is really angry, again, oh, the sleep hits, but nothing will happen here, she doesn't even use the um, smoke bomb, and just walks back. Oh, Zoe, 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 you died the same way again. She tried to be like a little, like, like, oh, she tried to be like, I'm going to punish you, but wait, if I go close, what if the Akali just hits me with a spell? Oh, oh, and then she just died. Yeah. And if you're familiar with this, if you see this in your games happening where teammates are just uh, walking up and like, okay, let me just hit them one, one, once more and you're like, 
But why? Now you die. But bro, why are you not helping me? How am I supposed to help you? You just literally got yourself killed because you wanted to deal 50 damage to the person. But you wouldn't even kill them. What's the point? But, but I have to do something. No, you don't. It's like the endless discussion of, hey, you do not have to constantly do something in order to actually be doing something, because sometimes doing nothing is the right play. But what seems to be a little bit more of a daunting thing is the constant artillery barrage of the Zoe whenever you get too close to minions and have to last at them. If if there's something in front where um or you the Zoe is too high HP, it gets very, very difficult for the Akali to reach and she just gets poked out. But the issue is for the Zoe, all the damage you do, it only really matters if this Akali is then stopped like stop from diving you because look at the hp but the akali can just dive the zoe the moment this are uh, like the golden rule against an akali is to never let yourself get hit by the shuriken flip if you get hit by the shuriken flip you have no rights of saying akali is unbalanced because you literally gave her the only surefire way of getting you killed like coming back to the defensive items debate if you buy a magic resist item against an Akali, you will survive against an Akali, but only if she doesn't hit her third ability. If the Akali hits her third ability onto you, you will die regardless of your one magic resist item. So, 80 carries, once you hit late game, do yourself a favor, swap to Merc Boots, and have a more of Malmortius invent inventory, and maybe even a Shield Bow. Oh, nicely comboed by the Vein into the wall with the Condemn. But yeah, she will still fall to the power of the onslaught of the Z and Aatrox with the Akali just while spectating. Um, just generally for itemization, if you hit the late game, just please swap out items to make you tankier if the enemy has a reliable way of getting on top of you. Because it doesn't matter if you deal 5 or 10% less damage, if you die in a flash like the Sakali is constantly showcasing to you, it doesn't matter how much damage you deal, because you won't be able to do so. Nice combo, the Aatrox and the Zed are really playing well together, but now the Vein is on the hunt, the Power Bear is getting really collapsed on, but nice condemn again, QSS a little bit delayed here. Now we see another Shuriken Flip, quick combo, well, goodbye Vein. The hitbox of Akali's ultimate ability is such a joke, to be honest. In all honesty, regardless of how well this was played, this pisses me off. Like, sometimes it hits you from literally downtown Manhattan when you're chilling in, I don't know, New Jersey. Like, what is this? Oh, man. The Zoe is 0-7. She's really not having a good time. On League PC, this was this would be getting close to uh, perma auto band material. But yeah, that doesn't happen in Wild Rift. And the Zoe will maybe be 0-8. Oh, the Aatrox has to run away because the Lulu just turned corner. And there's an isolated vein in the side lane looking like a very tasty snack right now. And another big wave, because now, again, we are so far ahead in this game that it feels like, w what do we do? Because going for anything proactive is playing into the hands of the enemy team because there's bounties. And if you just die, you give them 150 billion gold. If you over-rotate, you give them bounties. It, it, it seems like such a dumb state to be in, because for the next objective spawn, there's nothing you can do. And even the next objective spawn is not going to do too much outside of Nasher. And even Nasher, as I say multiple times, is not going to do too much for you outside of maybe getting rid of the enemy Nexus shield. Which will not matter for the Nasher afterwards. So yeah, it's it feels like the, the pace like with the Nexus shield being as it is... And the bounties being as they are, it feels very, very bad. Oh, nice combo here over the wall, utilizing the shuriken flip to get over the wall. The condemn is being... Was it cancelled? No, she QSS the condemn. Absolute giga faker. They're going for a quick combo here, but the Akali is resetting, has no cooldowns available. The Zoe might get a kill here, it would be very good. Like, if the Zoe gets a kill here, it would actually be good. Because, <laughs> uh, well, the reset. And we have bounties coming up, and the enemy team has already one dragon. 
The Akali doesn't have ult, so this fight will be very difficult for her to play, but the Zoe falls again, 100 gold. The Gwen secures the bounty for the enemy team. So the enemy team has a soul condition, which, which is something we have to keep in mind. This is an ice soul, but the enemy is now stuck in the pit. The Akali needs to be very, very careful. Quickly tap the flash to just be sure that she doesn't get killed. Still has it available, just hovered it. Now she has to recall again. Ooh, I really don't like the fight. And in case you're wondering, why did the Akali just buy an item that doesn't provide her with AP when uh, the book that she could have bought has AP? Um, it, it also has mana, and just ability haste is also a very powerful stat, and you gain 10 for 400 gold, which is very insane. Oh, Zoe, hello, and we have QSS, bye bye. Oh. <gasps> Nobody saw that, cut the clip. This didn't happen, it was a mistake. And yeah. Back to just quickly, co well, quicker collecting jungle camps. Another downside of Akali, you cannot really farm jungle camps super fast. As you've seen earlier, you take a decent amount of time to kill them. So your gold per minute is kind of impaired. Or at least you're not able to get as much as other champions can. Zero, eight, one, Zoe. And you see how long it takes? And now we have to kill the small ones. 10 hours later, 50 years later. Oh, we got the crux. Bless. You see the issue? It's a Fields Batman moment. Oh, we see a vein. Nicely QSS in the condemn here. Needs to be a little bit careful. The vein still has a lot of damage. Oh, Zoe nearly hits there with the combo. Oh, this will be a certain. Oh, no! 1,000! You'd rather have died to the Zoe, because the Zoe player seems to not be the most proficient on a champion, but giving Gwen 1k gold? That is... One nail into the coffin you do not want to have, because this Gwen has 1k gold a minute. She has 13,000 something. And she has a Lulu. So, if this Gwen gets like, I don't know, Righteous Glory, and has Lulu walk after her, that might be a very difficult game unless she gets one tapped. And since you have your team has high physical damage portion, she might just itemize something into armor and HP. Cause she just needs to survive to win. Ooh, we see a Baron Collier and the enemy team is not in a position to do anything about this. The Gwen will probably not be able to get there in time. They're collecting the Baron here, Ooh, unless the Gwen steals it, Gwen jumps in. Gwen doesn't get the Nasher, but deals so much damage, she snips everyone apart, tops into Zonia's to avoid the death mark damage, but gets hit by the Akali's third ability, and they're all on one HP. If the Vayne was here, this was a certain... This was a certain wipe for them. They need to be really careful, they're all so low HP, and it's such a sketchy situation. Gets a kill, Akali is on the chase down. Another one is appearing here, but the Ignite will certainly spell the demise of the Akali on three burns to death. It's a tragedy. 500 gold into the pocket of the Lulu are not the worst. But you see, she died twice and gave away 1500 gold plus the shared gold. So I think she gave away, I think, um, 2500 gold. Is that right? I think that's right. 2,500 gold given away to the enemy team with two deaths. Because of the shared gold as well. Might be a little bit less. But yeah, you get the idea. That is so much gold. And you, you're effectively punished for playing well. Now there's a massive wave on the other side of the map that nobody can take care of. And the soul is spawning. Uh, this soul here... Given it's Zoe, it could be potentially decent, but it's not the the worst to lose this. Uh, the only scary thing is the slow. Ooh, Gwen hops in from the side, the Lulu will probably support her as well. They're losing so much HP, they'll probably execute the Lulu instantly. Yep, does so, but nearly dies to the Gwen in, in a heartbeat. So that's the ultimate available, making it very good for her for the dragon situation. But with the Lulu dead now, the Gwen is a lot easier to kill. Because... 
The Lulu gives the Gwen so much more um, tankiness. And now they secure the dragon, taking away the dragon soul opportunity or soul point for the enemy team. Now he has to dip back into the sideline. He has to secure these, uh, these waves. And as long as he sees Gwen, I don't think there's anyone on the enemy team that can deal with him. Like, oh, Vayne just wasted Condemn. And look how, look how this goes. Uh, well, he doesn't even, <laughs> he could have even emoted here. Oh, the Zoe is slowly coming from the other side of the map. He saw this. Okay, he's safe. He has his uh, crown as well, so he can't be slapped through a wall. Pretty cool to have. And the Gwen is still, like, she's still, she went for Cosmic Drive. I'm really not a fan. I think Gwen should, like, look into some kind of, I think, tankier approach here. Like, anything that grants HP, honestly. Like, if you're a Gwen main or an avid Gwen enjoyer, just let me know what you think. Because I think the entirety of the game sits on Gwen. And I think she just needs to become tankier. Oh, is that going for really interesting plays there, making it uh, very sketchy for Steam? Oh, it gets actually popped here. Not a good look so far. Now the Gwen is being fully healed again, getting sped up by the Lulu, running down through the mid lane, but now the Zoe is like he's in the middle of the entirety of the fight, has to be really careful, pops the smoke screen. Just Gwen tries her hardest to snip her down, deals so much damage from range, and he just eventually falls again, being chased down. Enemy committing so many spells, oh, and one of the biggest and most important mechanics, if you die in the late game, please just swap your enchantment to teleport, you never know if it makes a difference. Because now he will spawn with teleport being available, rather than with teleport being on cooldown, completely removing all possibility of him getting anything done. Ah, oh, don't tell me, okay. They'll lose Elder, but at least they got one inhibitor. Ooh, they maybe get a kill here? Nami's still alive, maybe- Oh no, the Elder just came in clutch. Will they be able to get more kills? Ooh, the sleep comes in through the Nami, that the Condemn might come here. Nice QSS here! Will this be enough? The Exhaust comes in, comes in- No! This could have been such a clutch situation. And all his deaths were such tragedies. And the Gwen is now finally picking up some tankiness. This will most likely be a spirit visage. Ooh, can she deny this Nasher? Would they stop Nasher? Would they start it again? Because you see this so for so long. I think Akali outsmites Gwen easily. Like with 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 E. Which needs to be mindful here. Dropping lower and lower. Crown is popped. Hitting the E onto the Gwen. Where did Gwen go? Huh? Big mistake. Oh no, they get everything down. The E connects as well, but the Elder will end the Akali, but nicely done. They deny the Nasher. All they had to do was play for time. The Gwen didn't have to walk up to face tank the E. And if so, you need to insta Zonius this to have a chance and then have the Ash reveal the Akali in the fo in, in her smoke bomb. Lucian permanently dashing, space gliding into the future. Now the Vein dies as well. This will mark the end of the game and all for one mistake, right? All for one mistake! This Gwen was trying her hardest. And this is how it ends? This feels so bad for her. Oh no. And yeah, that marks the end of today's video. We'll see all the like all the builds, like he's showcasing a few builds of um, Akali players of the server. So you can just take a good look at what you believe is uh, fit for you. And yeah, make sure to subscribe to their channel. Check back for more Rift Guides content in the future. And we'll see each other for more Rift Guides content very soon. So I really hope you have a beautiful day. And yeah. Enjoy your time. Take care, friends. See you soon.